evening, Silent Witness here. Um, I have a rather um, sobering and serious uh, blog post to read to you. This is um, very, very real. Um, it is going to happen to those who are not saved. Uh, they are going to go to hell and they are going to be there forever. And uh, I would just like to uh, warn the people that are watching to um, run to Jesus um, while you still have breath in your lungs, while he still allows you to be alive on this, on this earth. I pray with all my heart that you would get saved and so you wouldn't have to go to hell or be here for the Antichrist or be left behind at the rapture. Um, so I'm going to read the post now. It's called, What is the Difference Between Hell and the Lake of Fire? These are just a few thoughts I had one day, and I thought, you know, the Bible would explain it the best way, but I'm going to just read this. <clears throat> Here's a question I would ask if I was not saved, because I need to know exactly what's going on. What is the difference between hell and the lake of fire? Good question. Let's see if I can answer that. Perhaps someone out there wants to ask it too, so I spare them the embarrassment. Get out your King James Bible and see if I know what I speak of. Hell is a place in the center of the earth where an unsaved soul immediately goes when their body dies. If the person, while alive, did not believe on Jesus Christ to save their soul from hell, which is why he went to the cross and died in our place, they will most assuredly go to hell. Contrary to many false beliefs these days, you cannot earn your way to heaven. It's either Jesus or hell. First, hell, or Hades, a holding place in the center of the earth for the souls of the lost, those who did not believe on Jesus. The Bible says hell is down. Proverbs 15:24, Isaiah 14:9 and 15, Isaiah 5:14, Ezekiel 31:16, 17:21 and 32:27, Amos 9:2, Matthew 11:23, Luke 10:15, 2 Peter 2:4. And heaven is up. These souls remain there until the future resurrection of these wicked dead, which takes place 1,000 years after the resurrection of the saints, which are the born-again believers in Jesus Christ. So if you figure a lost person dies and his or her soul goes to hell today, it will remain there without relief, without water, light, respite from intense pain, escape, etc., until after the rapture, the resurrection of the righteous, through, uh, through and after the tribulation, when Antichrist reigns on earth, and through and after the thousand-year imprisonment of the devil and the commencement of the millennial kingdom. Then, after the thousand years of the millennium are expired, the rest of the dead, the lost who have been in hell all this time, Revelation 25, will be resurrected will be resurrected to appear before the great white throne judgment. Then they will be judged out of the books, their individual lives, and cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 15. By the way, the human soul can hear, feel, see, smell, and touch, just like the body did. Luke 16, verses 20 to 31. But the torments of hell are amplified far more than any pain experienced while this person was alive. Likewise, the redeemed soul may enjoy heaven in all its glory and beauty, and they will see the Lord face to face. Hell, it is said, is just as horrible and dreadful as heaven is sweet and beautiful. Now for the lake of fire, the final destination for the wicked of all ages all those who rejected Jesus Christ as Savior. This is the place where Jesus termed for the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, verse 21, uh, 41. 
This awful, horrible place is what some believe to be in the center of the earth. But I'm skeptical about that. This is where I started to think a little bit. Since the earth is going to be destroyed by fire, 2 Peter 3, verse 10, and also a new heaven and a new earth will be created by the Lord Jesus Christ, Revelation 21, verse 5. As referenced above, we know that hell is in the heart of the earth, down. But God does not specify the exact location of the lake of fire. However, we do know that it exists, perhaps in the center of the new earth. That's just my guess. Author's note. As of July 1st, 2016, I have just learned that the lake of fire will be formed, a.g. created, at the second coming of Christ. Isaiah 34 verses 8 to 10 says, For it is the, the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land therefore shall be become burning pitch, and it shall not be quenched night nor day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Isaiah chapter 34, verses 8 to 10. I'm so glad the Lord showed me this video, which I highlighted. I, I'll pass the link on when I'm done speaking. Which plainly explains the realities of hell and the lake of fire. I pass this knowledge on, grateful for God's mercy in showing it to us through his mighty word. The lake of fire is the final destination for all the wicked dead that ever lived. It is also termed hell by the Lord Jesus Christ when he says, Cast into hell. Matthew 5, verse 29, verse 30, chapter 18, verse 9, Mark chapter 9, verse 45. I know there's a lot of verses. You have to be patient. You're supposed to study the word of God. Shockingly, Jesus Christ mentions hell far more than he mentions heaven. I think he did this for a good reason. God will give them a body that will never burn up completely, but will endure the scorching and searing flames, suffering forever and ever. Not one soul will be able to pay their sin debt. Not one person will be able to get out, but they will re remember forever and regret shunning that lady who gave them a gospel tract the preacher's sermon to get saved just the day before they died, etc. I'm just giving examples. The lake of fire was never meant for human beings. Never. God is not willing that any man should perish in hell. It was created for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, verse 20, uh, 41. The lake of fire, as of right now, is not yet formed. When it is created at Jesus' second coming, it will receive Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet, all the demons, fallen angels that ever existed, and all the billions and billions of wicked Christ rejectors that ever lived and died on earth since the creation of man. From Cain to Hitler to the two demon-possessed teens who made infamy in the Columbine high school shootings, all of the wicked, unsaved, those who died without Christ, will be cast into it. It is not created yet, because as I have forementioned, Isaiah 34 verses 8 through 10 explains it. When Jesus Christ returns with the redeemed and creates the new heaven and the new earth, that is when the lake of fire will be formed. Therefore, the only place the unsaved go after physical death now is hell, the temporary holding place which is inside this earth. Even death and hell itself will be cast into the lake of fire. God is very specific on this point, and he does emphasize its existence when all biblical prophecy, prophecy is fulfilled. I am writing this post because I got to thinking about my lost parents, my lost husband, and all my former Catholic unsaved loved ones who did not make it to heaven by faith in the Lord Jesus. And I'm going to be held accountable for each and every one of them. The Jewish Burial Association, with which my deceased father has a grave in New York City, 
mails me donation envelopes saying they can say the Kaddish or prayer for the dead or somehow remember the memory of my father if I donate a small amount of money to their cause. I throw them away, knowing that my father is in hell, never to get out, and they just want money from me, the bereaved daughter. Judaism doesn't save souls. The blood of Jesus Christ saves souls. When I think of how long my loved ones have been, are, will be there, suffering without relief or hope, it makes me very ashamed that I did not do more to win them to be Christ to, to Christ to be saved. Their blood is on my hands, and I will have to give account to God for their lives. I do not look forward to that. The lost in hell will suffer so long and so much, and why is that? Good question. Because they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Not because they, will, they were certain Satan worshippers. Not because they drank too much. Not because they murdered people. Not because they had false religion, etc. The only reason people go to hell and then the lake of fire is unbelief, denial in the Lord Jesus Christ and his supreme sacrifice on the cross. 2 Timothy 2 verse 13. The gospel of Christ is so simple, yet mankind insists on corrupting it to make himself think he can help God out and earn his way to heaven by works. The Bible doesn't say that at all. Again, it's Jesus or hell. What about you, friend? Have you received Christ as your Savior? Are you going to heaven when you die? Or are you headed for hell and then the lake of fire? And I gave the salvation page link, and I will do so in the description box below. I really pray that you would consider Jesus Christ and that you are a sinner and that you were bound for a Christless grave in hell and that you would be saved by believing on him so that you may go to heaven when you die. Good night, everybody.